pounds. <laughs> We're allowed 40 pounds each and I think Jill and Adam overdid it on the beer maybe. <laughs> the windows closed to fear and doubt. I stopped and turned trying to find out. We're gonna take this A-Star B2 helicopter. Uh, it's gonna leave from here but we're gonna do some transfers up to the lodge with it. The lodge will be right off our left so all you need to do is come out here make sure you have all your accoutrements with you and then identify where the Seven days of eternity, seven days in another country. Every cell screams, stay right here, and my legs they freeze us in fear. We got time after this, but I'll need you as my bride. No puke! No puke. Yeah, this will work, eh? As soon as we arrived, we had a quick lunch before getting ready to head out for an afternoon of skiing with our guide for the day, Mo. Mo started with a quick refresher on avalanche safety. We'd all taken an avalanche safety training course, but it never hurts to practice your skills. First day was a good chance to get acquainted with our surroundings and the conditions of the snow. We're gonna head down, we're gonna follow these two ski tracks. Yeah. We're gonna head to the same place. Okay. And we'll just give the corners like 10 feet of berth. Just go easy for the first couple of turns, there's a hidden rock like on the convexity, which okay. is kind of difficult to see. As long as you're left to the tracks, you won't, you won't even see. Unlike when skiing inbounds at a ski resort, when backcountry skiing, you have the added risk of avalanches, cornices, and other hazards. This is why it's so beneficial to have an experienced guide who is familiar with the area and the current snowpack. Coming in hot!
Backcountry skiing is completely self-propelled, meaning no chairlifts, and in our case, no snowmobiles. Instead, we use special equipment, including what are called skins on the bottom of our skis, which allow us to walk uphill. We really do earn every turn we make. Good to go. Each ski day ended with an après, followed by dinner inside the main lodge. Ah, thank you so much. And then this is for you guys as well. Oh, sweet, thank you. Yeah, I can move some. Move all your drinks. Ooh. Oh, the beverages? Oh, uh, I can grab one in a little. It's good to stay hydrated, you know? <laughs> thank you. Morning. The next morning, we woke up at 6 a.m. to have breakfast and to prepare for a full day of skiing. Is that cool? Yeah. Our guide Mo briefed us on the plan for the day ahead and our avalanche beacons were checked by the guide in training, Matt.
spent the day skiing the Star Mountain area. It had great conditions. We covered 15 kilometers with almost 1,500 meters of elevation gain in seven hours of skiing before calling it a day. So day two here at uh, Whitecap Alpine, and we just finished a really big day of skiing. Now we're gonna relax with the shower, maybe some time in the sauna and have a beer outside. So this is the main lodge here, and it's where we take all of our meals and where we hang out at night when it gets too cold to sit outside. Next up, we have the shower and the sauna room. And this is where we keep our skis. And over this direction, we've got the accommodations, including the yurts where we're staying. And of course, the generator room and the composting toilets. On day three, we were paired with a different guide, Veronica, who took us to a new area called Lolita's Bowl. It started out with clear skies, but the weather was forecast to turn in the afternoon, so we enjoyed the views while we could. Thank you. 
For a little extra excitement, we decided to take off our skis for a short boot pack up a couloir above Lolita's Bowl.
Do two. Awesome day. Go team. We ended up skiing for almost nine hours, covering 17 kilometers while climbing close to 1,700 meters. We had just one more day of skiing to go. Day three. <laughs> day four. Day four. So it's day four and we woke up to about seven centimeters of fresh snow. Um, it's going to be a little bit cooler though up on the ridges and uh, the visibility might not be quite as good today, uh, but it should be some pretty good skiing. Yesterday was good. We were out uh, over yonder and we did a bunch of alpine laps in the morning when we had good viz and then in the afternoon the wind moved in a bit so we were in the trees. We did like some mini golf laps and then uh, rallied everyone for a big home run at the end of the day. And, we knocked out like 1,700 meters, so it was a big day in the mountains. And uh, it's coming down, we got a little bit of snow in the forecast for today. Seven centimeters overnight. They said another five to seven here today. Um, probably skiing a bit more trees. And um, a little bit cloudy, winds in and out, but getting a new zone today. I'm excited. <laughs> Because of the variable visibility and all the fresh, unsettled snow, we spent day four skiing in the trees in an area called Standard Ridge. We really were able to make the most of all the fresh powder with another 15 kilometers and 1600 meters of climbing in eight hours on skis. skiing that notch there so it's just below or to the left of Lolita's and then the other notch that we skied was above Nabokov's nightmare but I think we skied down probably like the really easy part of Nabokov's. It wasn't the nightmare <laughs> yeah. section. That first one was the boot pack. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Whew. Back that. Yeah, it's blazing hot in there. It's crazy. It's so cold. <laughs> It's Saturday, it's day five, and after four days of incredible skiing, it's unfortunately finally time to go home. Um, we're all a little bit sad about it, um, but we had an amazing time here. The food was incredible, and the guides were great, and it's safe to say that I skied more powder in the last four days than I had in pretty much my entire ski career up to this point, so pretty happy with my stay here over the, the last four days.